This video is going to look at auto import templates and how they're used in the CAM350 product. Uh, before we start on it though, I should mention that auto import templates are only needed if you're loading Gerber and NC and want to run analysis. If all you want to do is just load some data to look at it or compare it to other data, you can just use the import auto import option here and just choose this option here that says no template and hit finish and it will actually just load all the layers. The problem is it makes them all graphics. So if I want to run a solder mask analysis I can't really without going in and specifying each layer. And I want to be able to do this uh, from a template standpoint and a generic checklist so that uh, I don't have to recreate it each time. So that's why we, we go down this road of auto import templates. So let's go ahead and take a look at this process. Okay, so we're going to use the auto import process as I mentioned. We're going to go import, auto import. We're going to point towards the directory. I'm going to get something a little more complex than the one we just looked at. Uh, let's use let's use this one. This is a buried and blind via design. All right, and we're just going to go ahead and, and load it as I showed you before with no template, and that's going to be our starting point. Okay, now that we have it loaded, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and label the layers as to type. And we've got pull downs here that we can use for all the layer types here. So this is also the manual way you would do it if you don't want to use auto import templates. If you're just doing one design, it has its own naming convention. You can go in, label your layers as to type, and then just go ahead and run your analysis. But our goal here today is to create a template that can be used on other designs. So I'm going to go through all these layers and label them as to type. Okay, so I have the layer type set. Uh, some of these we're not going to use. These, um, there's actually a board outline layer. We're not going to need to label those as to type, so it didn't do those. So once you have set it manually here, uh, if you're going to run analysis, you could just go straight into analysis. Uh, you need to make sure a net list is extracted, but that's part of our checklist anyway. But uh, other than that, you're ready to go. So I'm going to go to the layers table down here across the bottom, and I'm going to go to the template editor here in the uh, layers table. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a template based off of these layer types that are already here. So I'm just going to say new template. Uh, we'll call this uh, it's the name of the company that it came from dimension and then we're gonna instead of adding one at a time what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna apply the current design table so it actually takes the names out of the current one and creates a template based off of that now we're, we need to make these names generic so we'll do a little editing on that and if since we are making them generic, we'll hit the generic option here uh, as well. So this would be if they are always named exactly the same thing. I'm going to get rid of a few extra layers here. Like I said, we're not going to do uh, we're not going to do the board outline, and you don't really do the drills in here as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of the drills. All right, and we're left with this. Now this grouping option is important when you're creating the template. That's how you can select a type, but have it uh, figure out what multiple layers are that are using that type. For instance, for our copper layers, we can just call them all internals, group them, and it will make the first one the top and the last one the bottom. So we can get rid of the top and bottom here. And then we're going to get rid of these other ones since we're just going to use generic names. So we get back to this. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use wildcards. And the wildcard for uh, just anything in one location is a question mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in three question marks there. And that means it can be up to 999 layers. And it will understand the first one's the top and the last one's the bottom. This next one's kind of unique. It's uh, negative planes. Uh, not everybody does negative planes anymore, but if you do have those, you can have it look for those if there's something in the naming convention. Uh, but we do want to go in here and again make it generic. 
Okay, the next three all work the same. I've got a top and a bottom. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of all the bottoms. And we'll work off the tops and we will group those. By the way, the negative plane, uh, we don't need to group. So we will group these though. And what I'm going to do is instead of using question marks, I'm going to use an asterisk. Now, one thing I saw is we got SM and SMD to make sure the software can distinguish between the two. I'm going to leave that zero in there and just put in a star here afterwards. So anything, as many digits as it wants to be after SM zero will be a solder mask. Then we'll go down here to the uh, paste layer and we'll let, leave that at SMD star. And then we'll go to the silk screen layer. We'll make that SST star. Okay, so we've set up our uh, generic uh, names here. It's going to be called Dimension. We're going to go ahead and save this now. And we'll save it in the whatever version we're using here. And I like to put them in the demo directory. You can see there's one out here, but we'll put them here in the uh, demo directory. And we'll call this one Dimension as well. And save. And then we're going to close out of here. It is going to prompt us to save the templates here. We'll say yes to that. And now we're going to test it. So file new. We will go back to auto import here. Point towards our directory. I'm going to go into the template editor first here because what I want to do is if this is the only naming convention we use in our company, I might want to make that the uh, default one. Now, if we're getting data from different sources, maybe I'll have someone else be the default or another one be the default. But since I'm setting this up for this particular company, I'm going to make it the default. Close out of here. Again, save here. And now we're going to load this and use the default template. If I had multiple templates I wanted to choose from, I can use this option, best matching template. But we'll say, use the default template. I hit next. And as you can see, it has filled out all of our layer types for us. Okay. We'll hit next again. And this is one of the reasons you want to do this ahead of time is it's actually able to put all the layers in the correct order. And I could go in and define, you know, my partial drills here at this point as well. Um, just uh, saving you steps later on, especially if you were going to run netless comparison, you'd need to know your what layers your drills go through. We'll hit finish. It'll prompt us to extract a netlist and we'll go ahead and um, do that and our data will load with the netlist extracted all our layers in the proper order and all of our layers defined properly. So this is how you can use auto import templates to load uh, Gerber and NC data and just be ready to go right into analysis and run the analysis. I should point out that if you load intelligent data like ODB++ or IPC2581 None of this is required. But since we like to run analysis on whatever data we're sending out, that's why we've loaded Gerber and NC because this is what we're sending to be uh, manufactured. An alternative to that solution, though, would be to load the intelligent data, then use our design comparer option to compare the intelligent data to the Gerbers. And if they match, then we can send the Gerbers out if we don't want to send intelligent data out. So these are all options that you can use in loading data and what data we're going to use for analysis in the CAM350 tool.